one topic that I find that generates a lot of attention when we talk on radio in Idaho is when we get into details uh, about forest management and uh, land management and the involvement of the federal government with nearly two-thirds of the state. Uh, it's an issue that people have been dealing with for a very long time, and there might be some pros, but there's also some cons that have come along with this. We're spending some time this morning with State Representative Dorothy Moon. We're at 39. It's six minutes after 7 o'clock, and she is, I'll put it this way, she has been working on a, on a whole series of issues related to this, and uh, she had a bill that was moving through the House yesterday. It looks like it's picking up some momentum at this point, but she's going to be spending some time with me, Bill Colley, on Magic Valley this morning today on KLIX. First of all, uh, Representative, welcome back to the program. Oh, thanks, Bill. You know, I always enjoy doing your show. That's is a highlight of my week, believe me. It's because I don't yell at you. <laughs> no, but I heard you said I was mean. <laughs> yes. I corrected myself. <laughs> no, that's right. That's right. <laughs> On the other hand, you know, when you and Dar got married, if you'd convinced him to go to the Ozarks, uh-huh. then I guess he would have been the Ozark Mountain Dar Devil. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when you're a gold digger like me, you know, I've got to come to where the I got to come to where the gold is. So anyway. All these inside jokes, people are thinking, what are they talking about? Uh, <laughs> all right, well, so on a more serious, uh, a more, much more serious matter, you were just telling me off air uh, that you had a presentation yesterday, and uh, uh, we're dealing with some issues that simply, when it comes to land management, we're going absolutely the wrong way. You know, and Bill, we, well, we have for decades. You know, once uh, FLIPMA was passed and, you know, the regulations seemed to change and it was more of a hands-off policy. And I, I know everybody has seen the devastation in our forest and the smoke in the sky every summer. And, and, and I, uh, the states definitely take a notice uh, for sure. And uh, the federal government working with them uh, in, in partnerships to start cleaning up some of this forest, it's going to happen. Uh, yesterday, we had a, a joint uh, resource meeting in the Lincoln Auditorium. So we heard from Dustin Miller with the Idaho Department of Lands and our state forester, uh, David Groschel. And I will tell you, it's uh, it, it's pretty scary what they talk about. Um, and we, the mortality of our forest, that the trees are dying faster than uh, anything that's grow, you know, growing, and it's uh, unfortunate that we are going to be dealing with fires, but we have to get in there and start cleaning out swaths of areas um, and, and leave you know the healthy trees and get rid of all this downfall and, and clean it up. So um, I, I'm, I was excited to hear uh, it's, uh, that they are moving, the state is moving, and meeting with our federal partners, and uh, we're going to start seeing some action there with the Good Neighbor Authority starting to be implemented in the southern part of the state in Region 4. Uh, region 1's had a lot of success, and they've done very well with that, but we've, we need to get it going on all over the state. Now, you're behind a bill, I believe, called H-162. Uh, yes. That, yes. Of course, the, for technical reasons, that's how it's listed, but uh, mm-hmm. maybe you can explain to us a little bit about what this bill is and what it does. Okay, well, what this bill would do is create an Idaho Council on Federal Lands. And this is so important right now because, you know, as I've been on your show before talking about the salmon chalice planting efforts in that forest and how, you know, we, we've been kind of isolated way out there on the eastern side of the state. Um, the state agencies are involved uh, very much so now, which is great. Uh, they're making comments. In fact, today is the last day for comments uh, on some of the planning components. And um, I'm telling you, I've seen some of the comments going in from our state agencies and and from other, like the Idaho Recreation Council, from Farm Bureau, and and it's really great that they're paying attention. But had we had this Idaho Council on Federal Lands two decades ago, oh my gosh, we could have been watching what was going on or what wasn't going on uh, in these federal lands within our state boundaries. But the Idaho Council on Federal Lands, and it did pass uh, in the House, and so it's on its way to the Senate. Uh, there's eight members, four from the Senate and four from the House of Representatives, and then one person from each of those uh, respective uh, chambers will then uh, be a co-chair. 
And what they'll be looking at is to review policies and issues associated with uh, federal lands in the states and relating to also Idaho's uh, jurisdiction, uh, our sovereignty, taxation, you know, so we can comment on natural resources, economic development, you know, if they're closing off areas, well, like the steelhead season. That definitely had some huge economic uh, impacts on folks in my district and then also up north. Uh, A lot of people were losing thousands of dollars of outfitting and guide fees when they started closing down steelhead season. They were canceling all of those upcoming trips. Um, And that's where they make most of their money. I mean, that's when they make their money so they can live in these rural communities. So so this council is needed to really see what the hot button issues are aside from just wildfire. So I, I'm excited. And um, it did pass, and I, I'm, I'm sure it's going to go through the Senate as well. It passed overwhelmingly, and I know you don't really want to you know, start any you know, problems with the opposition over on the other side of the aisle, but when I noticed that the minority leader was among those who voted no, and I I just wonder, don't they think that we have the brains in Idaho to handle some of these issues on our own, or are they trying to centralize everything in Washington? Well, they're trying to centralize everything in Washington, but, but they're also trying to keep uh, the power the power uh, with the environmentalist, and and it, it's not there anymore. I think the environmentalist groups uh, in this state who have acted um, against uh, any timber sales, who have acted in filing lawsuits against the fish and game uh, to close steelhead season because of this NOAA permit, you know, there's a multitude of things, and you know, uh, I, I think people are kind of tired of it. You know what? I, I consider my Myself an environmentalist because again you know we live off the grid we have a very small carbon footprint and um, most people who do live out in these areas they are the ones who are taking care of the lands but to, to put up roadblocks to where we can cut wood or to where we can graze cattle and not let these grasses get up so high we have more fuel all over the place that there there is a real disconnect and um, I, I think they're starting to realize they better jump on the bandwagon to start uh, fixing up and restoring some of these forests because um, if if not we're just going to be in flames for the you know for the rest of our life that's all we will ever see in these public lands. So um, I, I think th- th- their mentality uh, needs to change. I think that they should realize that they're, uh, they've they been on the wrong side of the stick for too long of a time, especially when you look at wildlife, too. You know, nothing's worse than seeing all of these animals that have just been torched um, with all of these fires, you know, when people get back in the woods and you see how devastating it is. So um, it, it's not good, um, uh, the visuals. So uh, hopefully they'll realize the tactic to stop all these economies from thriving in the state has to stop. We've got to take a break in about a minute and a half. I just want to mention uh, State Representative Dorothy Moon is joining us. It's uh, 39 on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. And of course, Bill Colley with you on Magic Valley this morning until 10 a.m. And we should remind people I think your district is number eight, right? Correct, correct. And, and it's massive, it's geographically massive. Yes, it's about 15,800 uh, square miles so, of uh, area. And a lot of that happens to be timber forests and its mines and and, and, it, and, and, and some rolling hills. It, it is geographically, it's a fascinating thing to see. Uh, but but this is, this is, in a sense, our birthright. Yes, yes. And, and you know, it, people didn't come out here to start plant potatoes. People came out here because of the, the mining, um, that opportunity, and, and be, for fur. They came out for the wildlife and for the mining originally, and then they, you know, started settling along the rivers, and then, you know, the agriculture followed. But, yeah, I'm in the area where the original sons and daughters of the pioneers live. <laughs> they are a pretty hardy, hardy <laughs> group of people, for well, sure. You can stick around a few more minutes, right? Oh, yes, of course. And what we'll do is we'll take a short break. I've got to get to the Ag Report uh, in just a moment. Also, we've got a check of weather. Bill Colley with you on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 37 on Magic Valley this morning at 715, and we've got more coming up with State Representative Dorothy Moon. We're getting an education uh, this week in how the state legislature works uh, because after. The show today, I'm going to be taping an interview with uh, Representatives Zollinger and Rubel, uh, who didn't have time during the course of the morning to do it live. So we'll air some of that tomorrow morning on Magic Valley this morning on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 37 at 720, and we're joined this morning by State Representative Dorothy Moon. Bill Colley with you until 10 a.m., and she's been working on a package of legislation 
uh, dealing with land use issues. And uh, she was just sharing with me during the break that, uh, well, let's just put it this way. As I understand it, you're not making um, a lot of environmentalists and, well, we'll call them liberal environmentalists very happy, are you? Well, no. I, I just can't believe it. You know, you, again, I, you'd think they would want our forest to be healthy and um, get out of the way and let folks go in and clean it up. But uh, I, don't, I don't think so because we had, um, aside from myself, every representative had tons of emails against three pieces of legislation that were brought forth this week. And one, the one we just discussed, House Bill 162, but we also had two memorials, um, uh, Memorial uh, 5, House House Joint Memorial 5 and House Joint Memorial 8. And the fit, number five dealt with that if the federal government was to obtain land in a county, that they have to give up uh, some lands of equal value so that we don't lose our tax base. And uh, in, you know, Custer County, we're 97 uh, percent public lands, most of it federal. And so we're living off of 3 percent three of the residents who live there, in, they're in holdings. So when when we have sit what we had something like six thousand five hundred acres over the past ten years that have been taken out of our tax rolls, because in, um, like the Nature Conservancy will come and buy some land from uh, someone in the Sawtooth Valley, or and then what they will do is give turn around and give it to the Forest Service. And uh, that it's not it, like I said on the floor. It it's not that the Forest Service is you know hired a realtor and they're out looking for lands. <laughs> they're given to them um, more or less so that we can keep locking locking folks out. So this one, uh, House Joint Memorial Five, more or less was a no net loss. Counties cannot lose any more tax taxes uh, with these land transfers. And in my opinion, they shouldn't even be happening. The Forest Service uh, and BLM should not be acquiring any more lands in this. I think they have more than enough. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then the other house joint memorial is a interesting one where wilderness study areas. So once an area is put in a wilderness study area, it is treated like a wilderness study area. And so about 540,000 acres, which were deemed study area back in 1991, we're asking Congress, uh, the Idaho Legislature, to, uh, in a memorial, to remove those. Let's get them out for multiple use and a lot. A lot of these lands are BLM lands, not necessarily Forest Service, but again, it's been 27 years. 27 years they're being treated as wilderness, and there's, they don't qualify for wilderness at all. And back in 1992, they were more or less said they didn't qualify for wilderness. They just have to be removed. There are some people within your own party, and I, I just, you know, I, I get a chance to look at some of the papers from around the state, uh, thanks to the miracle of the internet, I guess. But I get, I get a chance to look at these papers, and uh, there are some concerns even among some of your fellow Republicans I know about some of these issues. Uh, and, and I think these disagreements aren't necessarily personal disagreements, but southern Idaho looks different than eastern Idaho, which looks different than the Palouse, which looks different than the Panhandle and and uh, in north central Idaho. And, and so for various reasons, we're dealing with a lot of different cultural perspectives on some of these, some of these issues, and, and, and we've got to find a way to reconcile that. Well, we do, but you, you know, it, it's when you're looking at the BLM. Look at Owyhee County. Oh my goodness, there's so so many, you know, so, so much land tied up in that area, and it's encumbering, you know, ranchers and so forth. Uh, even though even though we have different geographic uh, characteristics, w I think we are dealing with the same issue. So I am sometimes very uh, alarmed when I see folks that uh, aren't uh, aligning with this. Let's remove some of these uh, wilderness study areas, or let's go for no net loss. Uh, as far as our lands being acquired by federal land agencies, uh, I, I just don't understand why. I truly don't, because I think it benefits the entire state. And not only that, I mean, you know, all, all ships rise if you improve the uh, uh, economies in uh, Salmon area or Chalice area with, let's say, a mining project, uh, a cobalt mine. Uh, that's just going to help the entire state. It's going to, you know, cut down on some of the monies we need for other services in education and on the road. So uh, I, I guess I just don't understand how anybody could be opposed to it. I uh I think that we're looking at a, a change in Idaho where we believe that a lot of the newcomers were, we were told they were more conservative than Idahoans who were native uh, to the state. But what we saw happen at least Ada County last year, where there was this political inversion, 
Uh, more and more of those people coming in, uh, they want to come here for recreation, but my guess is their core beliefs are that they want this federal control to stay. I mean, and judging by the way they voted in November, I think in the long term this could become somewhat of a threat uh, to your position. Well, it is when the narrative has changed. And and d- just like with the steelhead, this, uh, we had another memorial last week that was brought forward that the uh, Idaho State Legislature would, that we're going to encourage NOAA to move much faster on putting this permit in our hands to fish and game so that the folks here in our state can continue with their steelhead season. Um, you know, we, we had all kinds of letters against that. I'm thinking, you're kidding me. Why would that? But, but then we had uh, some environmental groups come out and say that the fish and game, they're the ones who close the season. Well, that isn't really true. The fish and game closed the steelhead season under threat of being sued by those six uh, river environmental groups. And, and, and so they were trying to change the narrative. And, and that's what I mean about they, they need to start realizing we all need to work together. We need to work together to help our folks when, uh, you know, they're under attack. But they weren't under attack by fish and game. They were under attack by those six river environmental groups who decided to, you know, threaten fish and game and the state of Idaho w- w- with a lawsuit. So, so, you know, they can't change the narrative. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, Bill, as long as I'm up here, I'm going to call them out on it. It isn't right. You know, at least tell the truth when you're getting up and sending out, when you get up on the floor or when you're sending out emails. You, you, you talk straight with the folks. We've got to get to a break in a couple of minutes, and I've got to let you run after that. But uh, one thing we should point out is if people would like to learn more about this, and, and get some more details. I guess that that Facebook page, Idaho on Fire, would be a great resource. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. So um, it is it is a closed group, but people can uh, try to you know try to add uh, Idaho on Fire uh, in their Facebook, and uh, it, you can get a lot of information there. It's really taken off. I think uh, people realize that they've got to get involved, and you know we've done that. Um, uh, the Salmon Chalice Plan uh, have increased uh, the group to well over 200, almost 300 people now, and, and, and that's that's what we need. We need citizen involvement, and just don't let the same old same old continue that has destroyed everything, at least in our public lands over the past 20 years. I got to add one last thing before we let you go this morning. Uh, uh, if you're planning on heading home this weekend, I assume you're going to be dropping in by parachute. <laughs> I thought Snowmageddon was over. You know, we might be looking at an- another one. I can't believe it. Yes, uh, Dar was telling me Galena was closed, Banner was closed. So, yes, you're right. I do need a helicopter. I need to go talk to the governor about that. Borrow his. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's got a plane. I guess I can learn how to parachute. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, I want to thank you much for your time this morning and keep in touch. Always, Bill. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. State Representative Dorothy Moon joining us this morning. On uh, News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310, uh, discussing some land issues and uh, some legislation that looks, at least in the case of, uh, I believe it's H162, is uh, is going to be uh, moving on to the Senate where it will likely be approved and likely go on to the governor's desk as well. All of this is about restoring some, call it, fair balance of control when it comes to lands, public lands owned by the federal government in this state, along with balancing that with our own economic uh, economic needs. In the meantime, news is coming up in just a moment. Bill Colley with you on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Don't forget uh, Twin Falls County Sheriff's Department at 8:30 this morning and then Pastors Roundtable at 9 o'clock.